Hello! Today I'm taking you with me as I feng shui my office. As many of you know, I moved recently moved into my grandmother's home to take care of it, to upgrade it, and that's going to take some time and I need to be working in the best feng shui space while I think of paint colors, while I slowly go through her things and organize it better. So today, when I moved in, I kind of just like threw stuff in here and, well, I didn't throw stuff in here. I took my best guess and then I looked at the feng shui of her floor plan and I looked at how I wanted it arranged. I sat in the space and thought, what feels like the best flow? And it's ready for an upgrade already. It's ready for a rearrangement. So today I'm taking you with me. And as I go through this, I'm going to be giving you tips that you can think about as you're rearranging your space, best space arrangement advice. So come along with me. So I'm gonna work on a few different angles here. I've never shot a video like this before, but you'll get to see most of the room back here. This is most of the shot. And what I'm doing right now, the way I have it is I have my desk at an angle facing the door. And I originally set it up that way because I thought it would feel the best so that I could still like film on one side and work on another. And it's just not really working out. The angle is, it just feels a little off. And so what I'm gonna do is make it so that my back, whoa, is, <laughs> is on this wall. And unfortunately, I think that means that I need to take down and rearrange all my photos. My sister worked so hard to help me hang those up and now I have to do it on my own. My goal for this video is one, to just show you a really cool transformation, but two, to give you advice along the way for when you have to work around other people's stuff. Like, I by no means am in the most ideal situation. This isn't like what was on my vision board. There's outdated fans and curtains and the paint color isn't totally right for the space yet. And I have all her stuff around me and that's okay because these things take time. You know, those renovation shows make it look like the renovation happens overnight and it can just happen in 24 hours and then they move the bus and you see the big reveal and that's just not how it goes. You have to save money for the paint. You have to save money for the new curtains. I have really big plans for like the closet, like all my stuff doesn't totally fit in the most efficient manner. And we have these beautiful bookshelves of all her like quilting stuff. So then I have just boxes of my own things that used to be on a bookshelf and now I have no bookshelf. So the point of this is not, I am not complaining, but it's just to commiserate with you a little bit because I totally get what it's like to have a house full of maybe keepsakes and other people's stuff that you've inherited. If you have children, then you're working around all of their boxes. And so we're still gonna make the best of it. Just because you have other stuff, you can still work with the feng shui. I'm gonna show you on my floor plan the energy coming in some of these windows and how I'm going to be activating the energy. My money energy actually comes in one of these windows. Stay tuned and I'll show you. Subscribe now, by the way, if you haven't, if you're new to this channel, because these are the real life advice feng shui tips that I give you. I really try and make it raw and relatable. So subscribe now so you can use all these feng shui tips to upgrade your space. At this point, I'm probably rambling. We're going to work through this space together. I'm really excited. And I'm gonna give you some tips and advice along the way for how you can upgrade your space as well. And don't get down on yourself if you have a lot of stuff you're working around. Now be honest with yourself, is it something you can get rid of? I cannot get rid of my grandmother's stuff. It's not my responsibility, it's not my items, and it's a slow process to for the people whose responsibility it is for them to feel comfortable kind of releasing that, moving on, donating it. You know, you don't want somebody to pass and you just throw away all their stuff and you forget anything ever happened. You know, it's a slow process. It takes some time. Here we go. Let's update the space. Okay, first tip already before we even get into it. How am I gonna move all this heavy furniture by myself? I have these sliders. My mother would love a shout out. She got these easy sliders for me when I was at college. I 
then also just always moved all of my stuff by myself. <laughs> so this was this was the family's donation and then they said, go off, move it all by yourself. Occasionally my sister would help, so I'm not gonna throw her under the bus. So, but today here I am moving it all by myself. These things make your life so much easier. They're like the things you exercise with, you put your foot on, you slide out and you like do some squats with it. Yeah, anyway, so you probably could use those as well. You don't need these specifically, but they slide. You put the furniture on this side and they slide on the carpet on this side because this desk is so heavy. That's the beautiful thing about all this older furniture is it's so well made, but makes it very hard to move by yourself. There's your tip. If you are like, oh, I just, I'd move things more if it was easier, get yourself some sliders. They will change your life. Before I also get really into it, these angles are like any filmographer, filmer would be appalled by this, but whatever, here we go. This is also all the boxes I'm working around, not to mention there's like stuff over here as well. And then there's like a hallway that comes right here. So originally I did not want to be directly across from the door because typically if you are directly across from the door, energy is coming straight down the door and imagine energy as a bucket of water. What happens if you pour that bucket of water into the doorway? And okay, so if it's your office, and you're sitting across from the door, you pour in that bucket of water, AKA energy, and it comes rushing towards you. That can be very overwhelming. Now, if you're working, sometimes it's okay because you need that energy, you need that motivation, you need all that uplifting energy to fuel you to keep working, right? You're not sleeping at your desk. So sometimes that amount of energy is okay. For me, I usually feel like it's still too extreme. I don't like to align my desk directly to a door. So that's one of the reasons too I had this at an angle. and But now I'm gonna turn it because what I realized is my computer will be in front of me. My ring light here that holds my camera will be in front of me. So it won't be this like direct whoosh of water, of energy that comes in through the door I'll be facing. It's also like a secondary hallway. So it's not like it's the front door that I'm aligned with where everybody's coming in all the time. It's a secondary hallway, secondary doorway. And so it's okay because people won't be coming at me. Okay, so now let's get into rotating the desk. You guys are getting a glimpse of my behind the scenes, these are all papers that just like didn't have a organi organized spot when I moved and they all need to be filed away. <laughs> so I'm not perfect. I've got a pile to hopefully I find a space after I, not hopefully, we don't say hopefully. I know I will find a space soon that all of this can get sorted into. that finding some abundance and change already 30 42 cents richer today Woo! my grandma god bless her she lived in this home for 45 years so every single part of this home has something in it. <laughs> I think this was actually, you know, everything happens for a reason and I don't believe in coincidences. And I think one of the funny little silver linings or like threads of this whole experience when we look back at it is gonna be that I don't have a hoarding problem. I don't have a clutter problem. I don't stuff every inch of my home. And so this is giving me a lot of content because I'm getting in the brain of somebody who lived in a space for so long and stuffed every drawer with with everything so it's so funny because these desks that i'm borrowing all these drawers are full another reason all my stuff is still in boxes even months later we are getting ready to use the sliders for this beautiful handmade chest
here's a tip for along the way as you're rearranging, dust and vacuum along the way. Get out all that old stale energy. Did you know dust is like an accumulation of skin cells and a lot of other things, but like dead skin cells are in your dust. So you want to be getting rid of that because what are skin cells? They're energy from us. So it's all truly stuck, stale, dead energy that you want out of your space. Dust and vacuum along the way to save yourself time. You're already rearranging it, you're already moving it. Now I'm gonna dust today, but I'm not gonna vacuum because I just moved in here. So I did just vacuum all of this. And for purposes of this video, I'm just gonna keep to the dusting. Tried to get away with three, we need all four. So now under here I have a Vitraza glass mat that I was gifted. It's really great. That's how my chair so easily rolled off of, should I stand over here? This filming angle is so weird. <laughs> under my chair I have a Vitraza glass mat that I was gifted and that's why on this carpet I'm able to roll this chair so easily. Make your life easier. Don't sit at your desk and not be able to like work efficiently to be able to roll around at your desk. You know, so many people all of a sudden had to start working from home and maybe you have carpet upstairs and so you have this rolling chair or maybe you don't have a rolling chair and your life is annoying because you're in a static chair and you really can't move around. Get a rolling chair and get some kind of mat underneath you so that you can work easily. And sometimes I know you're like, oh, I don't wanna spend money on this mat, but if you can work happier, you will work longer and you will make more money. So think about it that way. Invest in your office space, invest in where you are working and making all the money that then pays for your hotels and your vacations and your good food and all your other happy stuff. So I will likely show you a glimpse of the floor plan as well, but my money energy comes in through this window. So I have two windows here. I have two windows here. Originally I approached my desk by coming in this way and walking around over here and sitting at my desk. That activates a lot of the energy from this window which is okay because what's coming in this direction is okay. But this is my money energy. This is what I want to be activating. And by activating, I mean you're walking in that space, you're using that energy, you're giving your body, your movement is what activates the energy of your space. Think about if there's a room in your home that you never use, like a secondary bedroom, and there's sometimes you go a whole week and you haven't been in the secondary bedroom, that energy in that room is not activated. So a perk to getting a feng shui consultation, well, it's all a perk, it's all great, but working with me one-on-one, -on -one, we get a feng shui bagua mat, and we look at where the different energy is in your home. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see different posts where I talk about how there's nine different energies that all have a good and bad side to them, so there's kind of like 18 different types of energy. And when you do a one-on-one -on -one consultation, you can see where the different energies are in your home. There's money energy, there's romance energy, there's knowledge, there's also misfortune and sickness. What is coming in the windows in your office? For me, I know that this is the money energy, so I knew that rotating my desk so that when I came in the room, I came in this way, and I come to sit down to my desk 
this way, I am always passing by this window. I am always passing through it. I'm every day I'll be activating it. To be honest, this space already is starting to feel better to me. I thought the angle was going to be really cool for YouTube videos and I thought it was going to be a cool shot so I could be working and then like turn on my camera at an instant and have a cool backdrop. Again, efficiency, making my life easier so I don't have to like overthink a backdrop every time I need to film a YouTube video. But it just wasn't working. The shot didn't look good. The pictures didn't fill the space as much as I thought they would. And also it just didn't feel good when I worked there. I haven't really been motivated to sit in this area, even though this is my money energy. I haven't really felt like using this space. And I honestly believe some of that reasoning is because I was at this angle. It was hard with the way the desk was. It was hard with where the chair hit the desk. It just wasn't working. So this already feels better having a nice solid wall at my back, which is what I always tell everybody. Solid wall at your back if you can. Sometimes the angle is best for you to be able to be in the power position so you see all the windows and you see all the doors. There's certain offices I've done where the angle is the better way to go. Another tip they talk about in feng shui with your desk is you do want to try and have it anchored to a wall, but I go back and forth on, that's what like classical feng shui in training I was taught. You want to be anchored to a wall. It's like stability and for working and all of that. But to keep it simple, it's good to have your desk anchored. Mine was not. Here, I have that opportunity, I have that ability to push this desk all the way to the wall. So we're going to do that, but you also want to check, again, what are you aligned with when you're working? I'm going to make sure that I'm not directly aligned with a door frame. You don't want any corners pointing at you. If I'm in front of the door, all of the energy rushing in, it's okay, because we already talked about this, it's secondary. It's not where people will be entering in and out of the room. So I'm not worried about like always being distracted, but I wanna make sure I'm not in line with a corner because that is a piercing energy facing me while I work and we don't want that. And also corner or no corner, just being in line with a door frame, it just like cuts you in half. Just like you don't wanna beam right over your head when you're working, it weighs on you while you're thinking, it's heavy. You don't wanna beam over you while you're sleeping or working for the same reasons. You might start getting headaches, you get tired sooner. So check above you where you're working. Beams are really beautiful, but you don't want to be directly under the beam. Scoot your desk over so that you don't have a beam above your head, that you're in between the two. Same thing with what you're facing. It's just not ideal to be directly on the door frame. It's like slicing you in half. So notice as I'm moving my desk, I'm sitting down and I'm feeling how it feels before I fully commit to that space. I scooted the desk a little bit closer to me. I sat on the left side of it, the right side of it. I centered myself on the desk. I really felt out what do I want to be aligned with? Which side of the desk do I feel better on? Fun fact, I'm left-handed. So sometimes I like the L side of a desk to be on the left side so that I can write. But then I'm also thinking about how can I make this a filming space at the same time? So do I want to be centered and have my stuff on the left? You really need to sit and feel. How does it feel in the space? When I do a consult one-on-one -on -one with somebody and we rearrange the space together, especially when I'm in person, I have them sit down and I'm like, okay, this is what the floor plan says. This is where we use the best energy. But if you don't feel good in the way that this is arranged, and if you don't enjoy working here, then you're not gonna like it. And it doesn't matter that the energy is really good. Let's use the second best option so that you feel really good and you're still getting good energy. Maybe it's not like the best on what the 2D floor plan says, but life is 3D and you need to feel good. Your energy needs to be good to interact with the good energy. If your energy isn't good and you're unmotivated, you don't wanna work, it doesn't matter how good the energy of your space is. So sit down as you're rearranging, feel the different spaces, the left, the right, the center, what are you looking at when you're working? Even if you're breaking some feng shui rules, 
but it feels really great, find the happy medium. Also on my desk, I decided to get rid of the L. So even though it's a bigger desk and it's kind of nice to have the L, I think for a while I'm gonna try it without because that gives me the flexibility to move to either side of my desk to be able to work it sometimes and then to be able to just film immediately. Doing these videos is so fun, but I talked about making your life easier. You want it to be efficient. I already have to do my makeup before all the videos. I don't wanna also recreate a YouTube setup every single time. I wanna be able to sit down when I'm feeling inspired and have stuff to say and just immediately film. I think what I'm gonna do is forego the L for a while. So there's another tip. <laughs> Look at all these tips that come up along the way, what I say. Grandma's giving me some great filming content here. This would have never happened in my smaller apartment where it was like one option, one desk. This is what it is. We're getting all kinds of points of view here. So here's another tip. Get a desk that's flexible if you can. I believe they're probably more money. I personally haven't looked at one. I have been working on card tables. I've been working at just coffee shops. I've been working in recliners. This desk is her desk. So I personally have not invested in a really nice desk yet because I haven't fallen in love with one and my space keeps changing. But if you are in your home and you have an office now and you know you're working from home for a while, invest in a really nice desk that affords you the opportunity to be flexible with your space. So this desk option is phenomenal because I can have an L shaped desk. And what I mean by that is like, this is an extension that creates an L that juts out, or I can get rid of it and just have a desk that's straight across. So this flexibility is really nice, especially if there's future projects where I do need more space to maybe be drawing or just need more desk space. Really try to not limit yourself with your desk. Oh my gosh, doesn't this feel so good? So now all of this money energy is coming in from this window. It already feels so much better. Now I have to find space for everything else that I just moved. In my other arrangement, I had this long, beautiful handmade chest aligned with this desk. But I think the reason I'm liking this new arrangement so much is because there's not, there's a lot of breathing room around my desk. If I get out of the way, so you can see there's a lot of breathing room around it. And that's really great. Just like your bed, you want a lot of breathing room around your bed. You want a lot of breathing room around your desk because what breathing room is, is it's space for energy to come in and inspire you. Energy is what gives you life. It's what gives you inspiration, creativity. And if you know your feng shui floor plan, then you know exactly, let me turn this a little. <clears throat> If you know your feng shui floor plan and you've worked with me, then you know exactly what energy is coming in. And again, I've said this is my money energy. So I think the reason I'm liking this space so much more is because there's all this breathing room. I feel like I'm really using the energy of the space. Now, the unfortunate side is what I was talking about earlier. Like, I can't just get rid of all this stuff. Normally, if this were my own belongings, I would like build a shelf or something. I would find a space for all of this stuff. But for right now, I have to work around it. And so I think what I'm gonna do instead is see what the desk or what this long chest is like in front. I believe it's low enough. So I'm gonna see what it's like in front of this window. The energy coming in here is actually more an energy where it's better to place stuff. The energy that's active, so there's nine different types of energy. I said they have two sides to each of them, so there's like 18. There's a yin and yang side to every energy that comes in your space. The yin energy, which is where you would normally place things, where you wouldn't normally activate, 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 
is the energy I want to be using, not the yang energy, or it's just better. So placing things here, setting stuff here is actually more ideal for the energy as well to make it happy and to help it run smoothly. Isn't it so interesting how complex energy and feng shui actually is. If you do BTB energy, not to knock it, it's great for DIY because it's very simple, but classical feng shui is the way to go. I am a little biased because that's the feng shui I practice, but it's not so set in stone. It's very in flow. It's very custom to your home and there's really so many different layers to it. Who knew, right? If you look at BTB energy, it just says North is career, Southwest is, I think, love and relationships, and that's what it is. But that's just not how energy works. That's, there's good, there's easier to work with, there's smooth, it's, I could go on forever, it's another video. But here in this video, at least you're seeing the way that my mind works and what I actually work with. Where is it better to place stuff? Sometimes when I work one-on-one -on -one with a client, I have a recent client who is going to be a new mom. Well, not a new mom. It's her third baby. But she's like, where can I put the baby stuff Whereas versus where should I hang out in my rocker? She has an area in her home where it's better for her to use the yin energy to place all the stuff because the yang energy there, where she'd be spending all her time nursing and rocking her baby, would be really hard on her in terms of trying to regain energy. So I'm having her hang out in an area that's so good for clarity and rejuvenation, and I'm having her put the stuff in the piles that are inevitably going to happen with the baby in an area where the yin, the calm energy is better. difficult things though is that this is where my outlet is so I'm kind of wondering if it's gonna be more of a nuisance to have this big long chest in front of my few outlets other things to think about again make your life easier Ooh, I'm out of breath make your life easier what's gonna be the easiest for me I think it's gonna be kind of it is what it is I just packed away two big extension cords so I might pull one of those back out and put it on top of the chest but we've got some kind of weird electrical like this is an old school house. We got some two prongs, not three prongs. So I'm not sure if I want to be putting a big extension cord into a two prong outlet. That I'm going to have to think on. all of your stuff in your space, remember to move everything with intention. What's my intention as I'm moving my stuff for my office? My intention is that I wanna bring in clients that are aligned with me, that I'm excited to work with and that are excited to work with me, that love feng shui just as much as I do and are ready to transform their lives. I am so grateful that I have access to my money energy. I'm so grateful that I have all of this stuff. Yes, um, you can hear me, I'm breathing heavy, but I am so grateful that I have all of these things. I'm grateful that I have this home where I can create an office at all. You wanna place your items and give areas attention with intention. What's the intention behind what you're doing? Mine is to bring in abundance, to bring in prosperity, to bring in more business, to fuel my business, because the more clients I have, the more people I'm helping. The better that my YouTube videos do, the more people are getting this message and they're loving their homes and they're transforming their lives and up-leveling their lives, loving their space, and that just creates and spreads more happiness. So of course, by the way, if you haven't already subscribed and like this video, if you're liking this, if you're feeling motivated to arrange your space, subscribe so you get more feng shui tips so that you can up-level your space, so you can love your space. Because more good 
breeds more good, right? And that is truly what I try to bring with feng shui. But anyway, as you're moving all of this stuff, arrange your space with intention and be grateful for everything you have. Don't just try and rush through it. I kind of am rushing because of this video. It's funny to be rearranging while I film. Normally I'm like standing and pausing for a very long time, really looking at the flow, but we're speeding things up a little bit here, but be grateful for everything you have and do it intentionally as you're rearranging your space and fill the room with your good, grateful energy. And I promise you, that's what you're going to see results. That's when you'll see change. After this happens, I know that there's going to be a new client that comes my way or a random sum of money that comes my way or even just I suddenly like meet the right person to start a new business project with that's the kind of change that comes up it's all this serendipity that begins to happen after you change your space if you're doing it with good intentions and you're not just rushing through it saying oh God, these papers oh this desk oh this is such a pain no like you have so much stuff to move that's exciting it's gonna drive me nuts that this is not centered so i think i'm gonna center it even though it kind of fills up the space more than i want it to visually fill up Here's another trick. These are pretty ugly. I have this crate. I used to be able to put it in a closet. I didn't see it. These are really attractive. What stuff do you have that is going to be visible? This is what holds important client information and things I have to access a lot. And so since it has to be out, I want it to be an attractive box. It's so much nicer to see this out on display than a bunch of these because these are open and I can see all of the files that don't match and the heights don't match and some of the paper is bended and it's not a big deal because they're just envelopes, but it visually looks disturbing. So anything that you have that's going to be out, if you want your space to look a little bit cleaner, but it's not actually papers that you can get rid of, put them in a nice box. I got this from the container store. Get a nice visual box if it has to be out a lot because it makes the space look nicer for all those papers that you can't actually get rid of. It's coming together. I just went, I just ran downstairs and put two big boxes away that had been sifted through and organized. Why have they been sitting in here? I don't know. That's like one of the nice things about rearranging and updating your space is one, you come across things that you thought you'd lost. I just found a pair of sunglasses. Awesome. And if you watched, if you did our New Year's decluttering challenge, you know I talked about bobby pins. I just found so many bobby pins. So moving your stuff, cleaning it up, rearranging it, you find all these little things that you forgot about or just more bobby pins. And sometimes you realize like there's piles of things that were like meant to be recycled a long time ago or boxes that you already sifted through that you're like, why are they still here, you know? We get distracted as we unpack and move throughout our house and we forget about what we started with. We all have a little bit of that. So I'm glad that I was able to move two of those boxes downstairs. Another tip is get as many totes that are the same kind of totes. Find a tote and stick with it so that you can stack them when they are unpacked. I have totes from college. I have totes from another moving session. I, of course, unpacked like three boxes where I couldn't stack them all together because they weren't the same tote. So get the same tote so that as you unpack, you can just stack all of them together and it doesn't take up more space. There's so much more room in here than when my desk was at an L. Even though I don't love this relationship between the desk and that, it's okay for now because there's so much 
space for this money energy to come in. Let me show you here. We will turn again. I think this is how we started. So coming into this space, you have all of this room now for all of the money energy to flow in. I can easily get in and out of my desk, which is exactly what you want. You don't want, you're already maybe not in the mood to be working. You don't want it to be difficult to squeeze in or difficult to climb around piles or difficult to roll into your chair. You want to be able to just come in, sit down, start working. So you don't typically want to be lining your walls with all of your stuff. You want to have places for everything and you want some walls to be empty so they can breathe, like this wall. You don't want it to just be a stack of stuff lining the walls. And that's like the walls closing in on you a little bit. But for now, that's a little bit about what I'm doing because those are the two, those are the two boxes. This needs a bigger drawer for, and this needs one of these boxes. And then I'll have a nicer setup there. And then eventually over time you do go through and eliminate some furniture that you don't need or change it into some other kind of furniture. I'm not even sure what's in that chest right now, but that's what it's like when you move into somebody else's home and you have to kind of start going through their stuff. Oh my gosh, this is so much better. Now I have this nice solid wall supporting me while I'm working and eventually I will paint this wall. I'll have to look at the energy. Or what am I saying? I know what money energy is coming into this space because I was just talking about it. So in this window's money energy, it's actually future money energy. I I'm prepping a space for 2024 when the money energy switches. Right now it's an earth energy. What supports earth, fire. Now we don't go all out and paint a wall red or anything like that, if that's too overwhelming, but we support it, the fire energy, or the earth energy, the current money energy with things like candles, things like light, things like triangles. There's all different kinds of things we can do to use fire symbolically to support the earth energy and bring in more money. But in 2024, it switches to a fire energy. The money energy switches to the fire element. What supports fire? Wood. Wood is blues and greens and columnar shapes, long rectilinear shapes. Because it's so close, we start to prepare. I start to prepare already for that. So I won't be painting this wall to support the current money energy. I support the money energy that's coming in here that nine that's coming into this space. So eventually, that's a long version of saying I'm going to paint this wall. I believe that my imagery that I have will already be working. I have some mountains, I have some water, I have things that are very stable and supportive to me while I'm working. And it's just so much nicer to be able to kind of see out all of the windows and have a nice solid wall feels so much better in this space. And look at, I can just turn on my camera, start filming, start talking to you guys and sharing all of the goodness. And there's so much breathability around this space. Remember I said I wasn't gonna put that big chest in front of my desk this time and I don't have boxes lining up next to my desk. Let your desk breathe so the energy you're working with can encompass you and give you more life and more motivation and more excitement for what it is you're doing. Speaking of excitement, if you are excited now to rearrange your space or a little bit inspired, please like this video. Comment below what you think of it. Do you think it looks like it has more space? And also, if you haven't already, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're alerted every time I share feng shui and mindset tip videos so you can up-level your life, transform this space that you tolerate into one you treasure.